So. I love yeah. eating five guys. You're listening to Living Podcariously, bringing you real men's perspectives, unfiltered, unapologetic, and uncensored. Recorded live in the Living Pod Kerosene Studio in world famous Cocoa Beach, Florida. And welcome to Living Pod Curiously. Uh, this, I think, is episode 33. It might be 34. I don't really... I don't know. I don't really remember. Um, I'm Adam. I'm one of your hosts, sitting on my left. I am Tack. I'm another one of the hosts. And on the Lady Chase. I'm Andrea Joy. And our newest addition to the cast. Hey, it's Jay Alvarez. Aw, yeah. Tack, Andrea, and I went to uh, Gregory's over in Cocoa Beach to watch Jay perform last Saturday. Oh, yeah? How'd that go? Uh, it was pretty good, but w- where were you? I mean, what happened? Saturday night or was, was at work? Friday night. We're supposed to support our co- oh at work. All right. Yeah, it was Friday night. I yeah, was I was at work too, too Tech. Was it Friday? <laughs> no, no, no. We went Saturday Why night. Why don't you come Friday. to my work and watch me work? Friday night we were supposed to go to Ray Burrito's thing. You were there on that Friday night. That was Thursday. That was Thursday. I'm all fucked up from the weekend then. <laughs> uh, but so, uh, that was a good show. Adam and Andrea came out on Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what I meant to say. I've seen him perform a couple times, though. So. I waited an hour for a plate with lettuce on it. <laughs> yes. What? Yeah. Literally. It was ridiculous. A yeah. plate of lettuce. Well, to be fair, she ordered a chicken Caesar salad. It's yeah. a steakhouse, and you can order upstairs. She ordered a chicken Caesar salad. They brought it out with chicken Caesar salad, but you asked for your sa- Caesar salad on the side. So you sent it back and said, hey, can I get a new one with without any dressing on it? She didn't even it. give it to me. She walked out and said, oh, the dressing, I'll go have it. It'll be real quick. Yeah, she caught they it. They brought him. He ate all his food. Then he ordered some fries. They brought his fries. He almost finished the fries, and I'm sitting <laughs> there over an hour. Yeah. What? And then she comes out, and there's no chicken on it. It's just like lettuce on a plate. I'm like, it took that long. Greg, Greg Reese and Cocoa Beach is not a uh, sponsor of Living Pod. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe Other never that, be. it was great. I love the bartender, though. It wasn't her fault. It was the cook's fault. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Wow. Um, but no, so Jay hosted the show, and, yeah, and then you I, had two I, awesome comics up there, too. Yeah, and I really hope that this doesn't affect my potential for future work <laughs> over at Gregory's Comedy Club. I love you guys. Maybe, Kelsey, you are amazing. Maybe we'll edit um, out Gregory's <laughs> name. No, no, that's fine. No, they need this un, They need this unfiltered review. Oh, all right. Um, <laughs> oh, everything else was great. I loved the. What was the bartender's name? Kelsey. Kelsey. Was it Kelsey. I loved her. She was great. She was very... She was right there with all the drinks. She made them really good. She was very friendly. And as Andrea said, she actually corrected it herself as she was walking to her with this. She's like, nope. <laughs> she turned it around. Which and is the right caliber back. of service you will receive at such an institute as... There you go. Gregory Steakhouse <laughs> we're, we're, we're and dogging, Upstairs Comedy Club. We're dogging his restaurant. <laughs> Oops, sorry, Jay. <laughs> so to get back to your original question, uh, yeah, no, it was a it was a really fun weekend. I, I got I had the pleasure of hosting uh, Justin Lawson and Ken Miller, who are actually pretty good friends of mine already. Um, so the you know it's it's always fun when you get to meet new comics, but it's a lot better when you already know the guys that are coming. You already know their style, so it was yeah. real easy for me to plan my set because I knew what they did and I knew I wasn't going to step on any toes material wise. Nice. So uh, yeah, that was fun, and then just ha- getting to hang out with them. You know, without having to drive to Orlando, they get to drive to me for once. Yeah, dude, we got the VIP treatment, Tack. We stayed afterwards and hung out with the comics and drank at the bar, just chilling (laughs) with the comics, like VIP. Oh, you've done that too? (laughs) We were going to leave, and I'm like, no, no, we're we're cool. We get to stay for once, so we got to, (laughs) even if we are tired. It's sad that this is the band that you chose to hang out with. (laughs) I mean, we all appreciate it, but yeah. Hey, I won won tickets too in the drawing. I won tickets to go again. Yeah, I had a chance to plug in the podcast release. I'm like, give it up for Andrew Joy from the Link Podcariously podcast. (laughs) Yeah, that was cool. We got a free plug out of that. It was pretty nice. Of course, it sounds like Jay did a better plug for Living Podcariously than we did for Gregory's and Cocoa Beach. (laughs) Great food, usually. Uh, Go ahead. Them up. They have a huge restaurant downstairs and the big comedy club upstairs. So you know, don't every, let every Thursday, just... Friday, Saturday night. Showtime's at nine p.m. Folks, there you go. <laughs> so is this hosting going to be like a regular gig for you? Uh, uh, yeah, I've been doing that at least monthly since February. Oh, nice. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm on their I'm on their house rotation for for house MCs. Very cool. Why don't we go back again, Andrea, and give them another shot to f- make your salad correctly? How about that? Why don't I just not order a salad? Oh, or that too. <laughs> I had their shrimp something or another, and that was good. Whatever that shrimp appetizer was. That was really good. I'll just order extra drinks. Uh, that works, too. <laughs> so where are you going to be again? Do you have any places you're going to be 
up in this next couple of weeks uh, uh, leading up to th- uh, Thanksgiving. Jesus, leading up to Halloween. <laughs> <laughs> um, this Wednesday, actually, which I do believe is the 26th, I will be at Open Mics, uh, which is the coffee bar at Florida Discount Music in Melbourne, Florida. Uh, every year they do a Hackoween show, which is the comics will dress up and perform as famous comics. Oh, no kidding. <laughs> yeah, and we'll do their material. I, uh, this year I would, I volunteered to be David Cross, which if <laughs> nice. anybody knows what I look like, it's basically <laughs> me with flannel. Um, <laughs> then that's easy. Yeah. So, so the costume part's pretty laid out because I already wear flannel most of the time. Um, oh, yeah, you even wear the glasses too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I, ser- I all I have to do is dye my beard white. And he does have a beard now. He didn't. Yeah, he used to always have that. So yeah. Yeah. So that's the easiest costume ever, and I'll be doing that again. That's this Wednesday, uh, October twenty sixth, for anybody in the Melbourne area. Um, hmm. And then I'll be at Gregory's again the weekend of November 17th, if I'm not mistaken. Stay, to- stay tuned for more details on that one. Oh, very cool. Let's see if we can get a few more people out there to the next show. It wasn't too bad. It was a, a decent crowd. Th- that place can handle, God, that place can probably handle 200 people or so. It's huge. Uh, I'm not sure what the capacity is. I do know this weekend was probably the slower weekend I've ever been. I think the most we had was probably twenty between 20 and 25 people this weekend, which is light. But what I love about them, even when it is a small crowd, it's a great crowd. Nice. You know, I I will take a crowd of 15 that's into the show any day over a crowd of 75. And out of that 75, like 50 of them are are just like totally disinterested. Doing something different. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) So, so that works for me. I'm happy for it. It's always a great crowd. Come out, get a, get some funny in your life. Indeed. There can't be much else to do on Cocoa See, Beach I, I wanna, night. I want to get back into the comedy thing, but I can't. Not with my schedule. Yeah, your schedule kind of interrupts that a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah. But I may be being switched to Saturday and Sunday off soon, so we'll see. Oh, nice. Yeah, hopefully. Um, Jay, I was talking to uh, Tom. Um, Tom Van from the Tom and Dan podcast out of Orlando. Yes. They have uh, one of their... Uh, uh, co-hosts is Ross McCoy. He's one of the comedians that does the tumbleweed stuff. And I think you said at one point you did a tumbleweed a long time ago or uh, something not, with him. Not too long ago. Uh, yeah, they had a show over at Bug Nighty's Brewery. Uh, I want to say maybe three, maybe four months ago. Uh, I've been Facebook friends with Ross for a little while. And um, I had the opportunity to do a show for him once in Orlando. And I, I, I wasn't able to make that. But when he got when he had the show in Merritt Island, it was a tumbleweed show. Uh, he remembered that I was in the area, so he let me know that Sweet. he was there and uh, picked me up. And that was an awesome show. Awesome crowd. Yeah. I mean, that was... Yeah. The, the Tom and Dan crowd go nuts oh, yeah. when they follow people around. They they come in forces, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Um, we're actually... I don't know. I won't, I won't say the dates officially, but we're going to have Tom and Dan on this show. Maybe Ross. I don't know if they're going to call in from their studio or if they're actually going to come out this way. Tom loves it out here in Cocoa Beach, so they might come this way. Uh, if not, we'll we'll have them on, uh, <clears throat> on just on the phone or a Skype interview or something like that. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you a question, throwback style to Tom and Dan. So I don't know if you've listened to their show before, but they have a lot of comedians that come through the Orlando Improv, and part of their round of doing radio station gigs, like to go you know promote their gigs on the radio, they also go to Tom and Dan's podcast because they have that many listeners. It actually is b- beneficial for the Improv. Um, but I'm gonna ask you a question that they ask all of the comedians and comics that come in there to do interviews. Oh boy, it's not that bad. It's it, Tom always loves to ask this question. He will, he loves the stories. He loves pulling stories out of people. So what he his question that he always asks actually it's him and Dan that do it. But they ask, have you ever taken a gig for a really really good amount of money that's either gone horribly wrong or like like a private or corporate gig or has gone unbelievably well. And you're really surprised. Like, have you ever gone and done like a uh, somebody's uh, uh, bar mitzvah at their house, and you're in front of some mimas and some you know five year old kids, all the way up to corporate gig- gigs where they'll put you up in a hotel somewhere, and you know it's a private type of private type of performance. I'm trying to think back, there's a lot of drunken nights that I, I can't remember. <laughs> um, Only about half of their comics have really good stories. A lot of them will tell stories about going you know hotels or something like that where they're going to be staying and then the hotel hires them to do something you know on the side yeah i think it was a show when i first started off in miami uh and i won't say the name of the place because i'm still friends with the owner so it's not gregory's um, okay no no we already dogged it enough down in miami florida <laughs> um there was a show that used to happen uh pretty regularly and it was my it was supposed to be my first time hosting a comedy show it was my first shot as an mc um 
I was, you know, people people started remembering who I was when I would start showing up at shows. I think I had been in it maybe like 10 months at the time. Um, and this guy was going to give me a shot, and it was awesome. And he was this huge promoter. Still is a huge promoter. So it was nothing for him to get people in. Um, I got there, and, you know, I had this huge set planned out. I knew what I was going to do, and I had written some new stuff that I was confident with. I get there, and there was one person. <laughs> One person, and she was there. She was my friend. Oh, <laughs> one person at this show, um, and like eight comics. So, so you're performing in front of other comics. You know, well, what ended up happening was uh, we just sat down and kind of had a roundtable conversation. We told her like, "We'll just have a roundtable conversation, you with a ton of comics." <laughs> and uh, that lasted for about ten minutes before all the comics. We were all, "What? The, what are we doing? Why is this what we chose to do with our lives?" We're in my let's, and we just, yeah, that was, yeah, that was. That was bad. I've seen a couple stand ups, uh, but where it's been, you know, there's the, the comics outweigh the number of people in the room that yeah. are there to, as patrons, and that's regular. That that's always going to happen. It? Yeah, that's. You know, that's I I I assume it's kind of it's got to be like being in a band when you're just like starting off and you're playing these like venues that, you know, you're basically playing for the kitchen and the bar staff. You know, yeah, like, you, you got to do them. I saw yeah. Collective Soul Tack, <clears throat> yeah, and there was only about ten people in the audience. Yeah, wow. way back in the day. Yeah, well, I've been uh, <clears throat> I used to play in bands. I used to play in Jacksonville stuff. I've had a couple of nightmare gigs where there was more of us on stage than there was like an audience. You know, it's like, <laughs> like oh, really? but then again, I've also played for a huge festival, like ten thousand people. You know, so nice. Yeah, it's good times. Very, very cool. Uh, all right, I wanted to bring up something. I, I marked this and favorited it because I'm sure that look, it fit, this story fits our motif here perfectly. Facebook is going to be getting less restrictive. In a certain area. Okay. Facebook says it's ready to push the envelope when it comes to the kind of content it allows. The social network announced on Friday, this is just this past Friday, that they are planning on relaxing their standards of what's okay to publish on Facebook, leading some people to speculate. Nudity? Yes. It's Facebook's free the nipple movement. Now, while, uh, their, uh, while their current restrictions allow nipples to be seen on women during two situations, breastfeeding and mastectomy scars. Those are the only exceptions that they allow a woman's nipple to be seen on Facebook. That's the weirdest thing ever. Why do you need to see women's nipples on Facebook? Why not? Do you ever report a picture if you see a topless dude on Facebook? I don't <laughs> report one if I see a topless anything. I don't think I've ever <laughs> yeah. reported a picture. Actually, you know what I did? I reported I a friend have. of mine that was threatening to kill herself on Facebook a long time ago. Uh, I, I reported that one. Yeah. Yeah, that, that one I think deserved it. But no, I think... I think the free the nipple movement for Facebook is a good thing. What do you think, Andrew? No. No, why not? I don't see why it's really needed. Why is the censorship There's needed, There's plenty though? of other things that you can go look at nipples for. Wieners? Yeah. You want to see wieners on Facebook? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, the guys, abs- for the most part, guys absolutely are, are okay with this movement. I'm sure. I, I feel. <laughs> I'm sure. Yeah, but what's the intent behind that? What? <laughs> About uh, behind the guys being like, yeah, 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 let me, let me I'm see all, some titty. I mean, I don't know what Tack's personal opinion is, but I'm all about freedom uh, amongst our citizens. And <laughs> what a guy has the rights to do, a woman should also have the same rights. I'm on a That's woman's right. movement here, it's Andrea. equality here. BS. Gender equality. <laughs> I, uh, I, I remember I was living in New York when they passed the, I don't know if it's an ordinance or I don't know what it is, but women are allowed to walk around topless in New York City. Um, you know, the, and it was because if a guy can walk around topless, so can a woman. And it's no cool shit. because you know who the tourists are on the train <laughs> as opposed to the residents. Because the tourists will sit on the subway and there's a topless woman and they're like, oh, uh, you know, everybody's like turning red and they're trying not to look. So is that the two, two, two distinguishing factors of tourists in New York? People who are looking up at the skyscrapers and then people who are staring at the girl that's topless on the yeah. subway? Okay. Yeah, whereas <laughs> everybody else, regardless of what you're looking at, everyone else is like, yo, you want to take a picture? Get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh. So you don't like this idea? No. No? Why not? Like you hate it or you just don't care? I just think it's just kind of a waste of time. Oh. Well, consider the fact that they are currently taking a lot of time censoring those pictures. It just means and now Adam, they're just not. It just means Adam can look at porn while he's at work. <laughs> As Ooh. opposed to when he's looking at porn now. He doesn't because he's <laughs> logged into work, so he can't go to those sites. That's actually a good question. So places that have, like, Facebook is allowed, but pornography is not. 
Ooh, you scrolling down your news feed and all of a sudden, boom, there's a pair of boobs on your news feed. That, ooh, ooh that could get kind of, could get kind of hairy. Oh, maybe Harry's the wrong choice of words to use. Ew, gross. I'm never going to get off the computer. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get off on the computer actually, all the time. That actually is a really good point. Though, when it comes to that. <laughs> that actually is a good point. We actually just had a thing in my job, really, uh, a, a real big thing, because a lot of people are starting to get canned for being on the internet. When really? they're not supposed to be being on sites that they're not supposed to be when they're supposed to oh, be producing. inappropriate sites. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it used to be, it used to be pretty widespread. You know, people would watch YouTube or Netflix between, you know, between periods of productivity. Sure. And, you know, it was, it was a non-spoken, like, it was okay as long as you were working. Yeah. But some people got carried away with it. Production levels started dropping. They started saying, Hey, remember that, uh, you know, user agreement you signed when you got hired? Well, now you're fired. Oh, damn. Um, yeah, I mean, they gave us a warning. They did warn everyone, "Hey, we're going to start enforcing this again." All right, we're we're getting you know production levels are dropping. We will be enforcing this within two weeks. Hard I think work. about fifteen people got fired. I've worked government wow. contracts for Jesus since two thousand two, and we've only ever had to let go in because I'm IT, so I'm like the guy behind the scenes that can usually see that kind of stuff. I don't do that now where I am, but I have done that. We've only ever had to let one person go for internet abuse pol- or internet usage abuse. Mm-hmm. Only one time ever, and. It wasn't because it was pornography. It's because it was underage pornography. Ooh. That guy got let go, and lawyers were involved to make sure you know nothing came yeah. you know to the company from that. Ooh. But uh, yeah, we've never I've never seen anybody officially get let go other than that one single guy from that. All right, wow. let's uh, let's take a break in studio. Tack, when we come back, yeah. I've, on a in, in the Halloween tradition, I've got some creepy sounds and i want to see if you guys can guess their origins oh fun all right okay all right uh we'll be back in studio in just a few minutes well so for everyone out there we want you to be involved in the show so uh engage with us send us an email to show at living pod curiously or go to our facebook page right on our wall send us a message uh let us know what you want us to talk about if you want to send Andrea a question for the diary, shoot her a, a message on Facebook and tell her it's for Living Podcurious's diary, and she'll ask your question. Uh, yeah, that's it. All right, welcome back to Living Podcuriously. Uh, all right, Tack, before the break. Yeah. Now, Andrea kind of saw me looking this up earlier, so she might, cheater, she, cheater, pumpkin she might know these already, but we'll see. I just wanted to help me clean the house. <laughs> <laughs> Standing over him. Are you done yet? Which mm-hmm. I did. I was cleaning when you weren't even here. Give me some credit here. She's not giving me credit because she went behind you and did everything over again. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess did. so. I, I can I relate. Did. I can relate. I had my girl here last weekend or this weekend, whatever, this past weekend. And the whole time I was at work, all she did was clean my apartment. So, Aww. That's nice. Well, it's not like she's being nice. She, it's just my cleanliness isn't up to her standards. So. <laughs> <laughs> she find your secret porn stash? <laughs> no, thank God it's all in the iCloud. So. Oh, okay. I can't find it there. Keep no. your porn stash <laughs> in, on a cloud? No, I'm just Ooh, weird. Kidding. Yeah, it worked out great for Jennifer Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I'm just kidding. I meant like it's online. That's what I meant. Gotcha. Anyway, uh, so thanks, Holly. Oh, <laughs> we can, this, this, I still kind of think this Holly person is just a, a myth. She, he just found somebody to pose for pictures on Facebook at this point because we haven't <laughs> yeah. met her yet. It's I Matt bet her I- and my sister are hanging out. <laughs> it's Matt yeah. Taio's ex-girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, you don't know this? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Uh, all right. So in the spirit of Halloween, I did a little bit of research. Now, on, on our other show, on the Twisted Ten, we come up with our own unique and original lists. And we mm-hmm. reference, you know, occasionally some sites and websites and stuff. But that we, I don't have to do that for this one. So uh, this list uh, was nicely put together for me from BuzzFeed. So thank you, BuzzFeed, for this. Nice. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to play an audio clip. All right? These are creepy-sounding audio clips. Okay. And I want you guys to see if you can guess its origin. See where you, what you think it's from. All right? Okay. So the first one's pretty easy. All right. I don't think it'll... Well, yeah, you guys might get this. So let's let's play it. Can you hear that? Yeah. All right. Adam in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> this is actual audio recorded. Not like computer generated or anything. It's, it sounds like something underwater. Okay. 
Not bad. Not bad. Andrea, what do you think? A spaceship. Ooh, all right. I want to say it sounds like like the intro to a sci-fi TV show from like the late <laughs> seventy, like sixties, yeah. seventies. That's the sound of space. Yeah, seventies. Uh, you guys are pretty pretty much accurate on this one. Okay, so, I said underwater. He said space, and she said and spaceship. Andrea said space too. Yeah. So how so, are we all accurate? Because it's actually the sounds that the Cassini spacecraft has been picking up from intense radio emissions from Saturn. So what you're hearing is the actual radio emission sounds. That are emitting from Saturn itself. Saturn's haunted. Saturn is haunted. I said yes. underwater. I was closest. There's a thing actually. <laughs> uh, I saw it. I, I want to say it's on YouTube. They actually have the radio waves from every planet, so every planet has a sound signature. Yeah, yeah and, and they play it for you on YouTube, and it's creepy, especially when they get to Earth, because then it, it's just uh, it's Louis Armstrong. Um, <laughs> I see sky <laughs> blue. Cloud it's the ghost of Louis Armstrong. Eye. The ghost of Louis Armstrong resonating throughout <laughs> space. No, but it's really cool, and that's actually yeah that. <laughs> It uh like it that. goes through each you know all the planets including Pluto you know nice. rest in peace Pluto uh still a planet fuck you Neil deGrasse Tyson um, <laughs> that's my hero that is legitimately he's, he's my, my hero. hero too but fuck him for Pluto Pluto's um, <laughs> a planet to me uh, they actually have they have discovered the existence of they haven't been able to locate it yet but the existence of a real ninth planet but it's in a gigantic orbit ten thousand to twenty thousand year loop Cycle. yeah we yeah. were talking about that at work the other day and they're like you should be able to find a planet I'm like dude that's a big loop if you yeah. don't know where to look yep you ain't finding it it is it what they're what scientists are saying is that that ninth planet officially ninth planet let's call it planet x because that's kind of what its name is can't right. they just call it pluto <laughs> no pluto already has its name you can't take pluto now you want to take can't pl- just pluto's, replace it now you want to take pluto's name too they just want to replace Damn. it pluto is still named pluto no matter what no they're saying that this one is so big that it's gra- that it's uh what is it it's gravity is actually tilting the rotation of the entire that's solar exactly system. right yes that's exactly and, uh, right i think we started talking about it because pluto actually just finished its first year since being discovered if i'm not mistaken or wow ne- Neptune, really? something like that yeah one of the one of the outer planets just finished its first year one of my Since being discovered. one of my favorite objects in all of the solar system. One of Pluto's moons, because Pluto has four moons, even though it's pretty small, it still has four moons. Four. One of them spins so fast. Think about a water balloon. If you take a water balloon and literally toss it in the air while it spins, what's it do? It flattens out because the gravity goes to yeah. um, right. geosynchronous centrifugal force. Cent- thank you, centrifugal force. Uh, <laughs> this moon has <laughs> He's done the one that works at the space center. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> this moon has done the same thing. It's just going, you know, really, really fast, and it's got it's gotten really flat, like a almost like a frisbee. It's ridiculously flat. It's cool. See, I knew Pluto had what was it, Sharon or Karen, whatever the. I don't. I, the, it's I named don't. after it's named after the guy that rode the boat through the river Styx in Greek mythology. Uh, um. Yeah. Again, I'm the guy that works for a car company. Nobody here. This stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no, 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 <laughs> okay. no, don't know that, that one. <laughs> hmm. All right, let's move on. Um, this one, uh, I, there's no real uh, details behind this other than it's just creepy. This recording is one of the first recordings uh, that they've got documents of. This is from 1860. I know what this is. Do you? Yeah. Do you hear That's that? That's a Florida mosquito. <laughs> I know what it is. Isn't that creepy as hell? All right, what is it, Tack? Well, that's one of the first recordings like ever, like on an, on an Edison uh, disc. It or sounds like Edison, a. I want to say it sounds like a little girl singing. It's a woman. Um, Isn't it like a French a lullaby? Oh, oh, that could be the. Um, um, I've heard it before, but there's no notes on this particular. Just oh, as recording that from could 1860. Be, well, there's two recordings. One is of a woman. Actually, that might be the um, what's it called when he chops some of his balls off? Castration. Yeah, it's the it's the chorus of the castrated boys. <laughs> what is it? Oh my god! What's a chorus called? of castrated yeah, what boys. What kind of stuff are you into? No dude? shit. <laughs> A um, chorus of castrated boys. Yeah, Do not search that on I my I know Wi-Fi. obscure science and space facts. You're over here with castration and boys. <laughs> um, hold on. Did castration. you know Jared Fogel? <laughs> castration choir. <laughs> oh, my God. He is searching this on my oh, Wi-Fi. This is on your search just forever castr- now. <laughs> castrados is what it's called. Castrados? Yeah. And uh, one of the earliest recordings is of a, a, a castrado. 
and that might have been what that was. But there's also another really super early some of the old Edison, Edison cylinders. That's uh, that's my number seven on this list hack. This oh, is sorry. Alessandro Morici. This is a, a video. What's that noise? It's Oliver. Oh, Oliver playing with his head. This is a video um, of the only castrated male to have made a sound recording. This was number seven, but we'll jump to it since we're talking about it. Yeah, I've heard this. Sounds like music. Yeah. That's a castrato. So, okay, I think I'm familiar with that term. If I recall, it's they were circumcised so their voices would never lower. Not circumcised, right. castrated. Castrated. I'm sorry, yeah, they were yeah. castrated, so their voices would ne- so their voice would never drop. They there was like rumors that that's what Joe Jackson had done to Michael, if I'm not mistaken. Really? I, I, I mean, there were rumors. They were never substantiated, but that almost makes me it feel better also, about him raping children. I guess <laughs> it was also like a royalty <laughs> thing too. They worked for like um, they were eunuchs. royalty eunuchs yeah. and stuff like yeah. Not like the cool eunuch, like Lord Varys from Game of Thrones. You are welcome, fans. Um, <laughs> I never really watched that show. Oh, God. Just shoot yourself, man. <laughs> All right, you with your, with your disgusting search history. <laughs> <laughs> All right. You'll probably get this one because you kind of already ta- uh, talked about it a little bit. Water. Underwater. It definitely is underwater. That's this the is bloop. Called, that's the right. Bloop. Didn't we already do an episode about these noises? It's an underwater fart. On the Twisted Ten? Oh, maybe it was a uh, taint funny. We didn't know air. Oh, really? Brought a list of like a lot of these were on there. That sound right there is unexplained. It's at the one of the deepest spots in the Marianas, Mariana, Marianas, Marianas, Mariana trench. 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 Yeah, it's like three and a half miles straight yeah. down, and it's they're recording noises, and there's no explanation for where their noises are coming. From. And apparently, yeah. it's super loud. It's, it's probably like, the mermaids. That's probably it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the pressure's so strong they can't get down there to see anything yet. Are, are they kissing mermaids? <laughs> uh. We coined that term. All right, let's go to the next one. This is another unexplained. I'm going to give this one away. This is another unexplained uh, deep sea sound. The Why name are you of this one. Giving them all away. Well, this. Well, well if it's unexplained, it's not, it's not like we're going to guess it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, all right, all right. They don't have any descriptions really on these. That's why I'm just moving along with these. This one's name is Who's Julia. I don't know what that means, though. Julia. I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> that was Jay Hopper's by the way. Yeah, this is going to give me nightmares for like the rest of the week. <laughs> Let me skip ahead. I could go to sleep to that sound. It's like nice white noise. <laughs> That's right? horrifying. I'm <laughs> really... Oh, that's creepy. Is something going to happen? I don't know. I guess not. Oh. God, no, I'm just kidding. Sorry. <laughs> There just you want to make people jump. I guess that long, long drawn out sound. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it sounds like the underworld in Beetlejuice. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> like when they open the door, and the janitor closes the blinds. Like this is for the lost souls. <laughs> All right, yeah. this is where the creepy factor gets ramped up a little bit. I'm Uh-oh. not going to tell you what this is. I want you to see if you can tell me what its origin is. Cool. This is what Simon and Garfunkel were always talking about. <laughs> it's like some little kid's toy whose batteries are dying. It sounds like cries from help cries for help out of Jared Fogel's basement. <laughs> It sounds like a track it could be on the next Slipknot album. No, you know what this sounds like? Okay, have you ever seen... You guys are familiar with like Disney's Pinocchio cartoon, right? Sure. Did you ever see the B version of that? It's like some B anim- some C, B-rated animation company did another version of Pinocchio. And it's the creepiest cartoon. I, I think it's actually been voted the creepiest cartoon scene in history. Really? Yeah, it's really disturbing to watch. I'm uh, to look but that this up. sounds like that. <laughs> What the fuck is that? That's freaky as hell, huh? Man, this is a circus chopped and screwed, man. What do you guys think it is? That's haunted. I'll give you a hint. It's from the U.S. military. 
<laughs> the sound recordings from Area 51. <laughs> <laughs> the translation of that mom. is Daddy, Daddy, come here, come home, Daddy, Daddy. I heard Mom. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this is an audio mix the U.S. military used during the Vietnam oh. War against the North Vietnamese. Yeah, they used this to was, play this. This was an attempt to scare the enemy into submission in the woods. That's specifically what this is for. Uh, <laughs> Gotta love the U.S. military, huh? That's badass. I love it. <laughs> Sounded fake. Well, it was. It was all produced by the U.S. military. I thought these were all real. They are real. Well, it's a real real sound. It's a real fake sound. <laughs> Hey, listen over there, you you know, uh, uh, critic number one. It's what it is. It's Harry Carey calling a baseball game, and they just chopped and screwed it and played it <laughs> in the jungles of Da Nang, <laughs> trying Denang? to get Charlie to come out of its trenches. <laughs> Charlie everywhere. All right, here's your next one. That sounds like you all the time. Make a noise to Oliver. It's a cat hacking up a hairball. Not a cat. It sounds like a bird. Yeah. Not, a, not a bird. Monkey? Nope. The way this sounds, like, this sounds like it's in this room. A baby Doesn't seal? It? Is this what a baby seal sounds like getting clubbed? No. Nope. This is horrible. <laughs> it's horrifying. <laughs> it is an animal, you're right. Or a prairie dog. Ooh. Okay, I'm going towards prairie dog. It's a howler monkey. Prairie dog's pretty close. So this is... Um, a red fox cub. The cubs in the pen were orphans and were later returned to the wild. So that's their cries for their for their parents. Aww. Yep. Aww. That's sad. Oh, did I just take us to a sad level? Mm-hmm. It's creepy though, right? If you heard that in your room <laughs> I, at night, that was the sad level. Me talking about baby seals getting clubbed was okay, <laughs> but <laughs> a baby red fox—that's that's over the line. Okay, I, I like where this is going, daddy. guys. <laughs> all right, you guys all should get this one relatively easily because of where we live. Hurricane. Was she right, Hurricane? <laughs> she was right, yes. Oh, my God. This is on uh, the 11th floor in San... Nice. San Luis. It's cool, like, because your wall looks like the Lost Souls room, and hearing <laughs> that... And... Yeah, for those that can't see, uh, Adam actually has, like, a bunch of scrolling skulls on his wall. From a projector light, <laughs> and uh, this sound with that image is horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> you see, so in this video, you we can't... play that during every hurricane. So... <laughs> I'll turn the video around. All you're doing is you're seeing a guy walking through a hotel. He's inside, so these are the sounds that are going on outside the hotel from where he's staying. Sounds like a bunch of kazoos. It sounds like he's going to turn a corner and there's going to be two twin girls standing on the far end of the hallway asking him to come play. This story either got really fun or really scary. One or the other. (laughs) All right. So, yes, Andrea, you are spot on for that one. It is Hurricane. Look at you. All right. Next up. Some kind of wind instrument. No, it sounds like not a wind instrument either. It's Enya. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oi, 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 oi. <laughs> is that the sound of space? Again, very good tack, yes. So this is the complex interactions of charged electromagnetic particles from the solar wind, planetary magnos- magnetosphere, etc. I love um, it this when is, you talk nerdy. This is all coming from... <laughs> this is the sound of... Talk Ju- nerdy to me. This is the sound of Jupiter. Jupiter is a wind instrument. <laughs> what if you played all the planets together? Would it be like an orchestra? Ooh, maybe the best orchestra in the universe. What if they harmonize? I wonder. What if it plays something really beautiful all together? Hmm. You know, it's funny. Jupiter was named after the king of gods. The, uh, if there was a voice of God, this is what I would imagine it sound like, though. Hmm. Like, that is That is pretty spot on. It's pretty cool. All right, so that's Jupiter. Is it getting different? Let me skip ahead. Oh, it's a little different. That's the same planet. What, did it get tired? <laughs> All right, still <laughs> creepy. Okay, this next one. All right, see if you guys get this one. I don't think you'll get this one, but you might. 
its origin anyway. Static? Sort of. Some kind of radio thing? I will tell you this about this sound. This sound has been broadcasting non-stop since 1987. SETI. I want to say something about SETI. Is that that radio station? We'll turn it off. (laughs) (laughs) Just hit pause. This is, according to YouTube, uh, this is a Russian number station which broadcasts a single buzzing monotonous note 25 times a minute every hour. One minute before the hour, the tone changes to the manner it does in this clip. It's been broadcasting since about 1987 and has only been interrupted on a couple of occasions when it aired garbled distorted coded messages and then resumed and shit, right yep yeah. and then resume broadcasting the buzz I wonder if we actually hear who's listening to it all this time oh did you hear that sounds like a weed eater uh, yeah it does sounds like me after taco tuesdays or electric toothbrush all right creepy sound oh yeah all right moving why don't on they just turn it off i get it it's off. It stopped. Way to go, Adam. Tack, you... Since 1987. <laughs> I, I <fucked> <laughs> Thanks, Russia. All right, so, Tack, you might get this one. Um, Andrea, I don't know if you would, necessarily. <laughs> just because of the origin. <laughs> well, don't get all pissy. I'm just... Just based on its origin. Let's listen. Jay, I don't know enough about you to know if you get this one or not yet. I'm a man of mystery. <laughs> Life is a myth. All right. I will tell you it's from 1987 as well. Madonna. <laughs> it's the sound of my brother being born. <laughs> I guess there's a little bit of build up to this one, so bear with me. <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of build up to my brother being born. All right, so what you're hearing is a regular TV broadcast right now. I'll give you that. <laughs> TVs were shitty back then. I'm just kidding. They're not getting those mouse ears or antennas to work very good. The rabbit no. ears. This is right before General you. Zod came out, starting I'll, to look for Kal El. <laughs> I'll tell you, the signal is perfect, and I'll see if I can show this to you. I'm going to jump back to the original broadcast. Okay. Well, I'm going to show you guys. This is the original TV show. And then and then watch what happens. Can you see that as well, Jay, over there? What year was this? 1987. Oh, yeah, I know this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so what, what the cast in the studio is seeing is this broadcast on two different stations was interrupted by um, a pirate hijacker of some kind that hijacked the air, airwaves for two major networks back in the this 80s. The, uh, dressed up as Max Headroom. Yep, yeah, dressed up as Max Headroom, saying some cuss words, some bunch yeah. of garbledy gook. No, nobody could understand it. To didn't this day. Like, didn't he like bend over, take his pants off, and he was like, smack my ass, smack my ass. Was he really? Yeah. I don't, I didn't watch all of it, maybe. Somebody, and he's like hitting himself in the ass like a fly swatter or something like that. I'm surprised this hasn't showed up in like a heavy metal video yet. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> But uh, to this day, the hijackers of that airway were yeah, no, st- are still at large. They never caught who this was. The technology just wasn't there to trace right. where the signals came from back then. Do now you, you can do it like that. That's why they never did it again. Potentially, they or they put in, they, they would... or they put in some sort of safeguard at the at the network to prevent that from happening again. Filter can make a song about Bud Dwyer, but they can't put that in a video yet. <laughs> All right, I see how it is. All right. Oh, stop, Max Headroom. Stop talking to me. All right. So this is the last one I've got. Uh, and it's stated by BuzzFeed as the most terrifying at all uh, of them all. <laughs> oh. 
that is the unsolved mysteries theme song. <laughs> Dude, if that song didn't give you goosebumps, and then as soon as yes. he came up <laughs> yep. in Robert tonight's Sack, episode. Robert oh, Sack shit. would jump in there, and then, yeah, I used to get, like, freaked out when I was a kid. Like, oh, like even just here, even God after God. the song was done, if I just walked in the room and heard Robert Stack's voice, I instantly <laughs> shit myself. <laughs> I was never scared unsolved. by it. I loved it. Well, I loved it too, but every time I they had when like they had the um, updates. ghost ones and stuff. No, at like the that. end yeah. when it would be an update of what happened to them. That's awesome. I'd wait for the end for the update. All right, <laughs> so there you go. That is BuzzFeed's <laughs> creepiest sounds That's of awesome. all time. That was a great way to end it, at least on that. Indeed. And there's thousands and thousands of comments of people saying, you should have used this, it was way scarier, or whatever. Damn, on yours, they said that already about us? Yeah. <laughs> Do it fast. <laughs> you want to hear the creepiest sound? Listen to episode 14 of... No, I'm just kidding. Uh, it was 14. Actually, 14 on the Twisted 10 is tax, which is number two, which is below yours, which is top of all Tax time. 14 is number uh, two, which is what? <laughs> tax Whoa. below you. Tax episode number 14, which was... I think was the Unsolved Mysteries one. No. No? No. Which one was it? <laughs> you don't know? <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh, all right. All right, on that note, <laughs> let's take another break in studio, uh, right. listen to a little bit more DJ Gil Lugo, and uh, if you're interested in any of his music, I've got in the show notes, so to just take a look at the notes under each one of the podcasts, you'll see links to his social media so you can check out his his music. I think he's got some stuff up on iTunes or SoundCloud or somewhere, but uh, check him out. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Living Podcariously. No, I'm not sure. right. I don't do voices. I do declare. <laughs> uh, all right, Jay. So last week I asked these guys the questions that you're about to get. So we'll run through these quicker because there's only one person answering this week. But it was essentially to get to know our hosts a little bit better. So it's uh, questions that came from the thought catalog. A couple of them are kind of shitty. A um, couple of them I don't even think we answered. But it's all right. Pick and choose which ones you want. You know, I really was hoping faking car trouble would get me out of this. I knew this was coming last week. <laughs> nice. All right. Uh, yeah, I did forget to ask how's your car doing. Car's, I, car's, I asked you in person, but I didn't ask you on the show. Yeah, car's fine. I replaced the water pump. Uh, this is after replacing the fuel sender and replacing the fuel pump. Or I'm, I'm sorry, I replaced the fuel pump last week along with the fuel sender. Uh, and this is after fixing the water pump. This is, by the way, a car that I recently purchased. What's listeners, a, nice. <laughs> what's a fuel sender? Uh, fuel sending unit actually shows how much fuel is in the car. That's what oh. monitors the fuel gauge. Wait a minute. Is that a really fancy way to say you ran out of gas? No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. the, um, my, my, whenever your gas gauge is off, like let's say you fill up your tank and it's still empty, it's because your fuel sending unit isn't, oh. isn't working. Okay. So I had to replace that because it was bouncing. Like I never knew if I had half a tank or an empty tank or a full tank. Ouch. So that mm, needed would to you get just replaced anyway. Judge it based on the miles? Yeah, I knew it would get about 300 miles on a tank. Oh, gotcha. All right, cool. So let's go through these real quick. Um, first question is, what is your philosophy in life? <laughs> <laughs> okay, philosophy on life. Oh, and essentially, oh. this is just to let the listeners know a little bit more about your personality. And uh, and yeah, I guess. Well, that's see, uh, about it. if you would ask me at sixteen, it would have been fuck hoes, get money. Um, <laughs> it's mo money, mo money, mo money. Uh, that was sixteen year old me. Thirty three year old me actually. Uh, philosophy on life actually. Um, you know what? I think my, my the the one thing I kind of have running through is uh, be better today than I was yesterday. Be a better person today than I was yesterday. Tack, his questions are all going to be better than ours, I think. I know because he's had more time to think about it. Well, I learned that at AA, <laughs> ladies oh, and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that was a good answer. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say, Andrea? Mine were good answers. Your answers were good. Yes. Then why do you keep dogging them? I'm not dogging the them. The whole show last time. You guys, look, yeah. so some of them you... No, I heard your answer last week. That shit, they, holy crap. I, I was like, wow, I, I'm going to have to right. get ready for this one. Right. Unicorn was answers to four out of the ten questions. So. I didn't use unicorn for <laughs> oh, me. Oh, I was going to say something that Holly had said to me, and then I remember something else that I had to say that Holly said. Can we take a break for two seconds? What did Holly oh, Not yeah. take a break, but I mean, like, stop with the question. Yeah, for yeah. A okay. Sidebar. <laughs> yeah, sidebar. So she was Holly, my girlfriend, got very frustrated at the last episode because uh oh. At me, because I kept going, <laughs> I don't know. 
Next question. You know, she, and she's like, answer the fucking question. You know, she was just like. No, you know what it is? This is how she was going to get inside your head. That's yeah, why no, you denied no. her that. No, she was like, she was like, don't ever feel like you have to censor yourself. It's a show. I get it. Say whatever. I don't care. I oh, like, did right. she think you were censoring yourself for her? I don't think she was thinking that. I oh, okay. Think she was just, you know, just like, just say it. And just the like, other yeah. thing that I've been meaning to say that I keep forgetting, Andrea, is that uh, after the episode, remember our conversation about boots and all that? Oh, yes. And you're like, oh, and Holly? I was like, she doesn't have any boots, right? She has boots. I she has so many boots. I wear she, boots. Has a, I wear boots. she has a room so dedicated does. to Saturday boots. Saturday night, I have boots on, and we're walking out to Cargo she on our day. Like, I'm like, Tag would hate these. Are they cute, Adam? <laughs> She's like, I totally have boots. She's like, every woman has boots. Yep. I was like, wow. As so I feel like I the horse's outside. ass. So <laughs> you, you're you supposed to be uncensored, but you should censor that, Tag. Censor that part out. I bet if what? Holly hadn't Nothing. been at your house this weekend, she would have walked out of her house and been like, <gasps> boots time. As soon as I felt that weather Saturday oh. morning, I was like, yes, boots. <laughs> oh. Yeah, so I was wrong, and you were right, Andrea. <laughs> Holly, to listen to you. Holly, we'll pull it out of him in the future. Don't worry. We'll, we'll make him answer. Can we work on that phrasing? Holly, will pull it out of him. <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Maybe she's into that stuff. I don't know. I haven't met her yet. Uh, no, all right. No all right. comment. Next, no, I'm just kidding. next question, Jay. Are you religious or spiritual? Not not and or, but are you either one of those? Neither. No, no, no. I'm a, I'm a devout atheist, actually. Uh, but I'm not in anyone's face about it. I don't think anyone here actually knew that. Um, You're a Jehovah's like, atheist. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. If it works for you, it works for you. And I, and I respect anybody's personal beliefs. For a, for me, it's just sure. Not, it's not a thing. Do you believe in ghosts? That's not one of these questions. But um, you know what? I actually have a really weird. Yeah, um, the reason I ask that is some people can be atheists but still have a spiritual side of them that believes in things like ghosts or, you know, well, an afterlife of some kind. I wouldn't refer – well, I, I I wouldn't refer to it as a spiritual – I mean, I guess maybe if you want to work – tweak the definition. I, I do believe in different planes of existence. I don't know if there's like a spiritual afterlife or anything like that. Very cool. Okay. But I definitely believe there's crap we don't understand. Um, and that's one of my – one of my – views on religions that it's it it was created to explain things we don't understand because i think it's i think it's human nature to not accept i don't know as an answer sure i think we need to know things i think we need to nail things down and if we can't explain it well that's some big being in the sky that because it it, it, there's too much fear that's derived out of the unknown right whereas i'm one of those people um that just like i'm cool with i don't know i (laughs) i think there's gonna be a lot of things we don't know and i'm perfectly fine with that richard uh is it Feynman? Richard Feynman, Feynman yep. uh, has a great video. I think it's titled Richard Feynman Beauty on YouTube. I encourage you guys to look it up. And it's a beautiful little um, monologue that he gives. I think he was answering questions for an interview. And he, he just talks about how, uh, you know, it, it's okay to not know everything. Was it Feynman that also wrote the letter to the Christian nation, or is that somebody else? <laughs> it wouldn't surprise me if he did. There's a, there's a fantastic short read or audiobook or... I think it's even available on YouTube to listen to the audio, but it's called A Letter to a Christian Nation, and it's an atheist's uh, uh, um, respectful addressment to the two major religions, mm-hmm. so Christianity <laughs> and uh, Muslim. Judea- oh. Judaism? No, Muslim. It's mostly to Christianity and to the Muslim faiths, mm-hmm. and uh, it's an unbelievably well-written document. Even if you're a religious person, you listen to the comparisons in the religions and some of the, you know, historical inaccuracies. It's yeah. actually a really cool well, listen. Well, it's amicable. It's definitely not Hitchens, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it would I, surprise me if Feynman came up with that. I always wondered if the ghosts were the atheists because they didn't believe anything, so they didn't have anywhere to go. Ooh, oh. interesting. So they're for Halloween. Stuck. We just got deep. Yeah. Right. Wow. Well, I've always had this. This is a bit I used to run on stage, but it's also something I used to believe when I was a kid. Um, so growing up, there was a lot of Jehovah's Witness influence in my life. Um, and I always had this idea, and this is, it's just stupid. I always thought if you were Jehovah's Witness, cause, you know, you're only allowed so many people in heaven. Uh, mm. so Jehovah's Witness heaven is a row of houses as far as the eye can see. And it's always 6 a.m. on a Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And for the people living in those houses, well, they're in hell. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. That was, that was like 16-year-old version of me. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Coming up with heaven and hell. Um, uh, all right. Let's move on to the next question. 
is what you're doing now what you always wanted to do growing up. Uh, as far as working at a call center, no, absolutely not. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, no, uh, stand up comedy, yeah, yeah, I'm definitely on the right path to what I wanted to do. I, I think I, ever since I was seven, so uh, my first introduction to stand up comedy was actually uh, <laughs> the first time I dropped an f bomb at home. Uh, and I think I told the story on Taint Funny once. Oh, man. Um, the first time I dropped an f bomb at home, my father, instead of beating me, uh, which he probably should have, uh, <laughs> Pulled out Carlin, uh, George Carlin's Carnegie Hall special. Carlin at Carnegie. And, uh, he's like, you're old enough to say that? You're old enough to watch this with me. And he just put this tape on. This is VHS, uh, VHS is what we had before Blu-rays, kids. Fix the tracking, um, dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, he pulled out the VHS, put it on, and I just saw this old dude holding a microphone wearing the greenest sweater I had ever seen. I remember that <laughs> outfit for yeah. sure. And, uh, he wasn't singing. You know, this was, I was seven. So this was like 1989, 1990. Um, so it was just an old white dude with a microphone. He wasn't singing. He wasn't dancing, but he had total control of that crowd. Yeah. Everybody in the audience was just he- sitting on the edge of the seat waiting for this guy to say something else. And I was way too young to understand anything he was doing. But then he did that one bit about farting in a room with your dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know when you fart from from across the room, you hear, and then the dog's head kind of tilts, and I <laughs> died. <laughs> and that was I had no idea what this guy was doing. I had no idea what stand up comedy was. Did not know this was a thing. But it was at that moment I said, because I, I already knew I couldn't sing or dance. That was not those were not talents that I. <laughs> so possessed. that was your aha moment to want to do stand up. At seven years old, I was like, I want to be like this old guy. That's really cool. So uh, yeah, now I'm doing. It, it it took that was seven, so it took me twenty two years <laughs> to yeah. finally get up on that. <laughs> um, but yeah, and now you know it's it's picking up, so I'm I'm definitely close to what I want always wanted to do. That's a cool origin story about Jay Alvarez. It's much better than Wolverine's origin movie. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so next question: What is your favorite book or movie of all time, and why did it speak to you so much? Ooh. <sighs> Okay, my favorite movie is definitely Spaceballs, <laughs> without a question. Between that what you space, said? Between Spaceballs oh. and Young Frankenstein. Um, one, because I love Mel Brooks. Um, yeah. Two, because I, I loved, you know, by the time I saw Spaceballs, I was already a big Star Wars fan. Um, so the fact that it was a movie, it was a genre of something that I loved so much, and it was still able to be funny. You know, like, you were able to make yeah. fun of it in such a, cl- you know, like a tasteful way. Which I don't know if anybody would ever be. I don't know if Mel Brooks has ever been confused for tasteful before, but um. <laughs> oh, I remember where that came from. When I first met Andrea, I asked her one of the staging questions you ask a girl when you're getting to know her in a relationship. I said, "All right, you got to pick a side. Is it Star Trek or Star Wars? Which do you prefer?" And her answer was Spaceballs. Oh, that was her answer. It's a great answer, dude. I was on a date in New York with this girl, and I asked her, you know, the, that all important question: Beatles or Stones? She looked me dead in the eye and said, "Zeppelin." Oh, nice. Yeah, I fucking proposed right there at Five Guys. <laughs> nice. Grab the Five Guys. That's a great place to go for a burger. I'm just saying. I love eating Five Guys. I Tastes love like- Five Guys. Snag in my mouth. that for a yeah. sound drop right there. Thank yes. you, Tack. That's how we're opening up the show. Oh. Nice. So, um, okay. So, yeah. Favorite movie, uh, Spaceballs. And then Young Frankenstein, just because I loved the take on Frankenstein. Sure. Um, favorite book, I'd have to say, was The Da Vinci Code. Oh, nice. I read it. I read the Da Vinci Code when I had just got back from Iraq. And I read it out of sequence because Angels and Demons came first. Um, Speaking of which, a new one's coming out. Yeah, yeah Inferno, which was an amazing yeah. book also. I've read, I've read all of those. <laughs> um, yeah, I read, I read the Da Vinci Code at a time where I was already, uh, you know, growing up, I was, even though I had a lot of Jehovah's Witness influence in me, I was, I self identified as Catholic. Uh, even when I joined the army when I first went to Iraq. But when I came back from Iraq, I was definitely. I definitely already started questioning faith. Gotcha. Um, and reading because the Da Vinci there's Code. There's no God there. <laughs> what, that, in Iraq? Was it political? <laughs> I don't it's know. There's so many joke. different levels. Was that, was that bad? Was that, was um, that mean? Was that racist? No, I mean, yeah. they, 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 there's racist. God. They just call him Allah, and it's the same dude. Um, <laughs> you know, there's an interesting theory behind the. And I mentioned this. I don't know if I mentioned this on the podcast or not before, but there's a really interesting theory that. In the in the Bible, Jesus is gone for like twenty two years or something yeah. like that in the well, middle of his life. Mm-hmm. And ironic timing between that and the arrival of Muhammad, 
which led that whole faith. It's really ironic how the the stories kind of meld together a little bit. So there's a lot of theists that have some sort of theory behind Muhammad was originally Jesus. Now, I'm sure we're going to get ISIS bombed for saying something like that. Well, the, the Muslim show, but... faith actually recognizes Jesus as a prophet. Uh, most people don't know that. I, I got into all this kind of stuff when I was trying to. The more I learned, the more I learned about it, trying to you know rediscover my faith, the more I was just like, this is all. This is all. You would garbage. you would really like the uh, the letter to a Christian nation by the. I don't remember who it I've is. I've got to look it up. up. It's totally it's a really it's a short read. It's really short, but it's really really good. Uh, all right, let's move on. What is a relationship deal breaker for you, Nickelback? <laughs> wow. I went to see them in concert. Oh God! Birthday. Break up with her now! Kick her out of the house! <laughs> Why do you keep her? Holy crap! Really? My boss bought all of us that and got a party bus. To you kick them in the Palm. balls and tell them to go to management classes. Respect your staff. And give us Nickelback tickets. Ooh, that, that's how you fire people. <laughs> <laughs> we had a good time though. I don't know. Party bus. Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> all he was doing was looking at photograph. Oh. I don't remember much of the <laughs> concert because we drank the whole way to West. That's Palm. the only way you can enjoy Nickelback. Is and if we're you're so way, plastered, way you don't back know you're on listening a blanket to Nickelback. Blanket and a hill in the grass, like way far away. Okay, awesome. if you were on West Palm and on a hill, you were on a landfill. <laughs> Whoa! That's, that's where my girl lives. She lives in West Palm. <laughs> uh oh. Yeah. No. And, uh, yeah. Just crappy taste of music. All right. Done. That's good. All three of us went with <laughs> cheating. So a poor taste well, also, in music yes. is good. Also, yes. <laughs> well, there's no right or wrong. We're I mean, cheating on you with Nickelback. Oh, I thought I call that dodging a bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which, how the hell did he get Ever Levine? Just saying, that's the goofiest motherfucker. He's like six foot thirteen, <laughs> and like it's eighty pounds. Inside that counts. But his face looks like he's fifty. But yeah, he got Ever Levine. It's what's inside that counts. Ooh. Maybe it's what's in his wallet and pants. We don't know. Well, she had her own wallet, so. <laughs> Avril Levine does, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Next one, easy. Uh, actually, this this one was difficult for all three of us to answer. What's, and I don't think we answered this one, what's the one thing that people always misunderstand about you? Ooh, yeah, it's actually easy for me. <laughs> no one takes me seriously. As soon as people find out I'm a stand-up comic, everything that comes out of my mouth is a joke. Do they always say, tell me a joke, because you're a comic? Oh, the first time, hey, yeah, no. Man. Whenever somebody asks me to tell them a joke, I come up with the most debauched and disgusting dead baby joke. <laughs> and Damn. I have it. It's in my back pocket. I always have it ready I, to go. You know, I no, I'm not always, doing that on I'm not doing that on this I, podcast. I, too, have a similar joke I always keep in my back pocket. Yeah, it's disgusting. And one of two things either happens. Mine are Helen Keller jokes. <laughs> yeah no i dropped the dead baby joke and one of two things happens either they're so disgusted with my existence that they leave me alone which is a win for me or they laugh hysterically and i realize that they are my people which is again a win for me <laughs> so it works nice. out no that's a good um, answer as a stand-up comic i imagine that would probably be cumbersome after a while yeah because people it's not just the whole tell me a joke it's like when i am making a serious point or i am passionate about something it's it, it, i am one of those people that i am naturally funny when i go on a rant like i say, i'll say something and it'll set people off and they'll be like oh he's just kidding the whole time I'm like no dick i'm dead serious <laughs> like i'm dead i'm deadly serious about this number seven what's on your bucket list in the next 365 days Ooh. Uh, so if you could check something off your bucket list in the next year, what would it be? I want to... Netflix special? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Actually, I joke about that. Ray Burrito put a post on his page the other day that said uh, there was, a, I guess, a scout in his audience. I don't know if he was serious or not, but a couple of the people got Netflix specials. Yeah, no, that's not... That's not it's bullshit? It's, yeah. It's oh, bullshit. okay. All right. Yeah, that didn't happen in Brevard County, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> uh you need to get some videos up, man. Actually, I don't know. No, I, don't, I haven't seen Ray, so he might be telling the truth. I don't think it's I think he's pulling a leg, but I don't know. He could be. For a fact. Yeah. Um, oh, bucket list for the next year. Um, okay, I want to... I need to take a week off of work. Vacationing in... I, I don't know if it's Klamath or Klamath Falls, Oregon. Klamath Falls? It's, it's off a beaten path. Um, it's, uh, it's not too far from... Uh, it's not too far from the California Oregon border. Really? Yeah. It's a, it's just this nice piece of countryside. <laughs> um, the, you know, it's a nice, it's a pretty good sized town out there. Pretty like small city, big town type of You're thing. You're going squatch hunting, aren't you? I'm not gonna go squatch hunting. What the hell's a but squatch? But I'm definitely gonna be in squatch country. Yeah. Sasquatch. <laughs> oh, Sasquatch. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna be in that neck of the woods for sure. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's uh, something. When I was truck driving, some of you guys don't know that I used to be a truck driver for a little while. 
Um, but yeah, I actually rode through there. Whenever I had a route that would take me through there, I always got excited just because it's a beautiful country to drive through. Yeah. I went to, uh, last year, I went to um, Wyoming up to, what the hell is that little town called? It's just outside of... Uh, 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 You're asking us the name of a town in Wyoming. Hold on, I, yeah, no, you, it's the, hold you, on. You'll recognize <laughs> it. Truck driver. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I might actually know Jackson's this. Hole. <laughs> there oh, go. Jackson Hole. Okay. Yeah, Jackson Hole. Yeah. I was gonna say if it's off of I eighty, chances are I've been there. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of funny because I had a buddy that was truck driver, right? And uh, I was driving from here, from here to Vegas and back, <laughs> right? And he used to be a truck driver. He's like, I've done that run a billion times. This is obviously before, like, GPS systems. Yeah. So he pulls the map out. And then he maps out my entire trip. He goes, if you get off exit 80, there's a Flying J right there. It also has a Wendy's. Oh, yeah. You'll like that. We also know. Yeah, yeah. we all know what we know. And then, where we go, the then you get off are. this exit. That's going to have, you know, this over here, this exit. You'll like that. So, we, And he was nailed it the whole way. I mm-hmm. was like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> all right, on to the next one. What is the craziest thing you've ever done, and would you do it again? Craziest thing I've ever done, would I do it again? You know what? I hate to admit it. I've actually lived a pretty tame life. Um, it's not a hate to admit. I don't think we could come up with answers for that. Yeah, either. we couldn't either. I, I want to say, did you come up with it? What'd you say? For every single one, I did. Talk in the mic, baby. Unicorn doesn't count. Shaving my head. Oh yeah, that's oh, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mostly meant me. I don't remember what anybody else said. I know he only remembers that you didn't have anything to say because <laughs> I answered every single one. Wow. Well, I've known him longer than you. So. <laughs> oh, I, I do remember I when I was a, you. when yeah. I was a teenager in high school. I always used to sneak think? out of the house, and to the point where my friends called me Amistad because I was always running out <laughs> for freedom. Um, and I, I one time did show up to uh, I snuck out of the house, ran out, ran into my friend's car, went to a house party that my mother happened to be at. Oh, oh. Yeah. oh, what a buzzkill. Yeah, it was a friend's birthday party, and uh, her mom had some friends over, and our moms happened to be friends, and that well, yeah, was awkward. That <laughs> was awkward. Uh, all right, number nine, <laughs> what is an ideal weekend for you? Definitely something involving mountains and a cool breeze. Yeah, I'm one of those serene people. Squatch like the, clo- the closest I squatch, g- squatch hunting. hunting. <laughs> the closest I get to spirituality. If you ever want to convince me there's a God, do it when I'm sitting on the side of a mountain during a sunset. Hi. That's going to be the easy. <laughs> Hi. Yes. yes. <laughs> That's going to be the easiest time to convince me that there's anything supernatural going All on. All right. Well, you would be higher on a mountain. <laughs> Duh. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. No, I'm not That's actually talking about like for, like chemically. It's just like the <laughs> oxygen deprivation. <laughs> All right, last question. If a genie granted you three wishes right now, what would you wish for? Only caveat, cannot be money. God damn it. That was all I wanted. I was like, uh, look, just give me money. You can keep the other two. (laughs) Wish number one, eliminate the caveat. Wish number two, money. Well, wish for something you could sell for a lot of money. Yeah. (laughs) I want a yacht. No. (laughs) Um, I'm on a boat. A thousand pound gold bar. Yeah. Three wishes. Okay, so we'll, we won't say money because I can't ask for cash, but I guess the means to make sure my son had a that's good comfortable life. Yeah. Um. So yeah, that would be the first one. Make sure it will give me whatever means I need to make sure my son has a comfortable life. When publishers clearing house. Um. No, because I don't want <laughs> I don't want the ghost of Ed McMahon showing up in my house. That's just <laughs> creepy for a whole number of reasons. Um, he was an atheist. That, that's that. Well, there are planes of existence again. <laughs> <laughs> that was a deep joke. <laughs> Did you hear what you said? Yeah. He was an atheist? Oh. <laughs> um, God. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. That would be one. Uh, two. I can only come up with two. They both came up with three. I can only get two. I mean, when you take money out of the equation. <laughs> I know, right? It puts a damper. Um, okay. The, the free time and, I guess, again, the means to be able to travel the world for a year. Just travel just the world. A year? Yeah. Okay. I just, well, give me two years, maybe. All right. Two. All right. Yeah. Give me, I just want to backpack and couch surf through Europe, and then go. I just want to go world tour. I just want to knock out everything I want to see. And uh, for three, just go basic. World peace is that basic? Oh, there you go. You I can feel, wish for me to get pregnant. I feel no, I wouldn't do that to Adam. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you still didn't get a match. I figured you said basic. I figured world <laughs> no, peace is the pumpkin close. spice latte well, of the Jewish. Oh wishes. yeah, that's tax right. was the best. Tax 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 was wonderful because his wishes and he got really you know deep in thought on this and said you know I really wish 
that I, I live a cancer free life. And then he said, I'm so selfish. I meant, I wish there was no cancer. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. I wasted a wish on me. <laughs> the ability to live with reckless abandon without any consequences. Yes, <laughs> that would be my third wish. <laughs> Oh, well, very good. All right, so that is brought to you from thoughtcatalog.com. That's where we got the lists from. There was actually 40 questions. I ch- uh, chiseled them down to the 10 that we had. So thanks, Jake. That catches us up. All right. Um, all right, so we are taking another break in studio. Up next is Andrea's Guyry segment. All right, we'll be right back. Hearing into the inner thoughts and expressions of men. Women submit questions for Adam and Tack to get brutal, honest admissions. We call this the Guyery. Guyery? Really? Is that the best we could come up with? Okay, number one. What is with guys saying, it's not you, it's me? What does that really mean? Who said that? Damn, that must be nobody. a follow-up from last week. Oh. It was just nobody. <laughs> did, did, who asked that question? It, yeah. it was nobody. It's it was an blank. anonymous question. Oh. And then what's the question again? What is it when a guy says, it's not you, it's... I mean, it's not me. It, wait, it's not you, it's me. Right? That's the question? That's case-by-case case basis. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, that is. That most of the time, yeah, it probably is them, but they just want, don't want to say it, and they want to bow out gracefully. Um, other times it really is them. And I've been in those situations a few times where it was me and it was not them at all. And it was just me. I just needed, I needed time still. I needed to be single for a while. I need to get things straight in my personal life, you know, things like that. So a lot of times it it was me, but sometimes in some relationships, you just don't want to like stir the pot. So you just bow out gracefully. The easy answer for that is, is that's a guy's way to take blame directly on himself either if it's true or not it's for him to take the blame to move on with the relationship and outside and go go separate ways that's him saying i'm okay with it being my fault you can blame this on me have you ever told a woman she's the problem and lived (laughs) to tell the tale (laughs) yes but they stalk me yeah um yeah that that's definitely like it's a graceful way to get out of it it's an it's an easy way to get out of it but yeah like tax like i've been in many situations where it has been me i'm like i got into a relationship i had no business being in uh, a couple times i said yeah, I, yeah. I, we can't we can't do this i like you I, I like you way too much to see this end in a in a tailspin and <laughs> hellfire all right <laughs> You no. look so sophisticated when you're in your glasses. These are old ladies. I was going to say, you looked a little disappointed with that answer. <laughs> no. <laughs> Number two is from Nancy in Florida. Mm-hmm. My boyfriend had been trying to build muscle, and he finally figured it out. He got the protein intake part of it down, and now he's adding mass and looks good. The problem is that I'm plump, not obese, just big and tall. As he gets more fit, will his attraction to me lessen? I don't really want to lose any weight. Basically, I just don't know how to keep up with his changes, and I'm afraid I'll lose him if I don't. I loved him as a string bean, and I still love him, but I'm worried he'll see me differently now. Oh, she loved her as a string bean. That's a cute statement. <laughs> she, loved she loved him as a string bean. <clears throat> oh, I mean, she loved him as yeah. a string yeah. bean. Yeah, yeah. Um, ooh, this is a difficult one. Yeah, that's. He might. <laughs> no. That's, yeah, my first question. It's a horrible question. answer, but it might be true. I don't know. My first question is, have you have you talked to him about this? <laughs> yeah. That's... That, that, that's the first thing. It's trust him to be honest with you, and then trust him to be the same guy he was when you met him. So this, this one's difficult probably... for This is difficult for me to answer, too, because it's... Um, so you know what my particular type of body that I like is, just because of our relationship, and you know what I like and don't like. So I'm hoping that this girl knows what her boyfriend or husband or whatever his was in the relationship. I hope she knows what he likes and can have confidence that that really doesn't change. But I can't say that because I've never gone through a life changing metamorphosis where I become a he man or some shit. So I don't know. I don't think so. I think your preferences stay the same or maybe yeah. change over your evolution of your life. But 
I think it's. I think his preference is still going to be what it's at. What it's at right now. And uh, the only reason why I said what I said, I wasn't trying to be a dick, or it's not how I feel. But when people, he's basically changing his lifestyle to be healthier, to work out. And a lot of people that get that way want to be with like-minded people as well. And if she's not like that, that's why I said that he may stray somewhere else. But that's all on a personal level, though. Yeah, it's a difficult one to answer. Yeah, she needs to talk to him, be open about it, and trust him to be just as open. <laughs> What's his reason for doing it? He wants to meet hot chicks? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe that's <laughs> going to happen. <laughs> yeah. But if his choice is just to be healthy, live a healthier life, that's a possibility. I mean, it's not outside the realm. I don't want us to be wrong on her Sue living vicariously. <laughs> if she, yeah, you shouldn't be getting life advice from podcast people. I'm sorry. Ask these questions. <laughs> this is that's like calling Miss Cleo and getting mad because she didn't. She didn't see herself dying. All right, let's just be honest about all that. All right, number three is from Lindsay in Arizona. I started seeing a guy about six weeks ago. He has a girlfriend. She's leaving the country soon, and he wants to spend time with her, so we're not official yet. Also, on our first night together, we tried to have sex, but he had trouble, and we haven't tried again. A friend of mine thinks he might be gay. How should I proceed? Whoa, whoa. Leave him the <laughs> fuck alone. That is a curveball from hell in that in that statement. The last thing she said is, oh, oh by the way, he might be gay. What? <laughs> what? That, where'd that come from? That's left field. Why do they? Why does she jump automatically to he's gay or might be gay? Because no, th- there's so many red flags in this. I'm sorry, but oh, honey, no, she's talking about his girl. He has a girlfriend who's leaving the country, so we're not official yet, bitch. What makes you think you're gonna get official? <laughs> yeah, and I'm sorry, but no, you you set women back. No, just leave him alone and find a guy that isn't attached or possibly gay. Stop <laughs> clinging to somebody who looks good to your family functions. <laughs> How many side chicks have ever become the main chicks in that type of situation? Yeah, very rarely do <laughs> a lot of happy ever. endings in that situation. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. That's kind of bad advice for her, but uh, yeah. Uh, I, if you, just whether whether, move he's, on, move whether on. he's gay or not, he can't get it up for you. What makes you think that's going to last? Because <laughs> if he's gay, fair, that explains a lot. If he isn't gay, well, holy shit, hun. <laughs> then she's not his type. No, I have no tolerance for that kind of shit. No. No. You're better than that. Trust yourself to be better than that. As soon as he said he had a girlfriend, find someone for you. That's have better mess with that. Have better goals. Yeah. All right, number four is Chloe in Florida. Hi, this is the first time I am letting someone set me up with a guy. We have exchanged pictures through a friend and numbers have been exchanged. The problem is that he hasn't called or texted but keeps making requests to be added on Facebook and meet up through the friend. Is he just not interested? It's been three days since information has been exchanged. He's Wait, he's trying to meet up and she's asking if he's not interested? Well, he hasn't texted or called her, even though he has her number. However, he keeps sending friend requests through Facebook. He wants to Facebook stalk you first and check out the photos that you've got on there before deciding whether or not this half blind date would actually would actually go through. I think that's that's a that's a hard thing about social media and dating now, because you never know if somebody's trying to stalk you and be creepy or if they're doing, I I don't know, market research. I don't (laughs) like. You, you never know, but I mean, if the guy's trying to friend request you and you're not because you apparently you're declining because he keeps sending requests. <laughs> yeah. So if you're declining the friend request, he probably thinks you're not interested. I, I, I say you two just cut the crap and meet up. Stop, yeah. stop. Yeah, Start agreed. being people. Yeah. Is that your answer, Tack? Yeah. Yeah. What he said. Okay. <laughs> Tack, I'll let you take the next one, buddy. <laughs> that's that's Tack's go to when he's yeah. he, uh, he forgot well, the question. Well, there's no point in letting you read it. <laughs> no, that's mean. Yeah, that's mean. Fell off the face of the earth. I forgot the question. Number, f- <laughs> <laughs> oh. Number five is from April in Florida. How accurate is the notion that love finds you when you stop looking for it? What the fuck? If you stop looking for it in hopes that it'll come to you, you're still technically looking for it. <laughs> that's a good point. That's a catch-22. Right? Yeah. That's a catch-69 right there. That, that's a Schrodinger's cat of love logic. I guess. Like, yeah. If it's um, not really there, is it there? For me, I was, I was actively dating when <laughs> I found love you. love dead or alive? <laughs> Do you I, hear that? You I, weren't looking for love? No, I was actively looking for a partner when mm-hmm. I found you. I was. You made me 
get rid of all them other girls at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I, <laughs> I, uh, I, it's happened to me a few times, so including this current. I think you weren't looking, looking for, for it and you found it. We're looking. It just wasn't. 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 Okay. Yeah. I think the, I think the truth behind that comes from when you're not actively looking for somebody to attach to, you stop looking for the best in people and, you know, oh, looking over things like currently having a girlfriend or potentially being gay. <laughs> like, you're not trying so hard to make something work. You're just kind of doing yourself. And so they, I think it just frees up a lot of the clutter that we, tr- that we tend to get caught up in when we first start dating somebody. And I think, and I think that's where where the truth in that is. I think it's just okay. you, you don't you don't have any. You're not trying to cling for anything, so you're not magnifying things while you while overlooking other things. Deep thoughts by Jay that Alvarez. Curious. I'm giving this advice while painting happy little trees <laughs> because Bob Ross is my spirit animal. He needs to see your Rob Moss Moss Ma, Rob Bob Ross. <laughs> no, it's Rob He's got Moss. a. They did oh. with a Taint Funny podcast. He did a. Uh, a skit of Rob Moss painting, but oh, it was Bob yeah, Ross. We did a, yeah, the parody of it. Right, number six, Mary in California. I found out my boyfriend had been talking to his ex and he promised it would stop. <laughs> I can't help but wonder every time he gets a call or text if it's really her and he's hiding it. How do I get over this insecurity? <laughs> Sorry. I was going to try to sound like one of those women and like. Girl, you don't need none of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was doing the old uh, drop the loser, get with the... What is it? Drop the loser, get with the winner? <laughs> well, something that rhymes. What is it? Lose the zero, get with yeah, the that's hero. It, that's, oh. it, that's it. That's, it. <laughs> oh. that's all right, Tack. Me and Adam are here to finish your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> Finished thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> um, that, that, so, hmm. You cannot change a girl's opinion of the relationship. If she doesn't have faith in that situation, then she'll, I mean, it'll take a lot to build it to that level. There's nothing that we can tell her that will tell her or that she'll understand as being have more faith in your guy. Otherwise, it's just simply going to stress you out. There's nothing we can tell her that will convince her of that other than time in that relationship. That's all that that's going to take. Yeah. She'll eventually not care anymore. Eventually. But there's nothing that I don't, I don't, I mean, maybe there is, but I don't think there is. I mean, there's, it's that, it's trust. You need to trust him. And if you can't trust him, you need to address it. Cause that, that's what it boils down to. If you, if you don't trust him, there's no foundation for any relationship. You're always going to be suspicious about it. And if that's where you are now, yeah. that's something that needs to be addressed and worked out. Cause it, it's, it's not going to get better if you hold it in. Yep. Agreed. I also agree. It's definitely trust. If there's no trust in a relationship, um, then that's not fair to either one of you, you know, because he could be completely innocent, but mm. you're thinking that he's not, and he knows when you're being passive aggressive. He's going to know that you think something's up because we're we're smarter than we look. We just don't care, <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to know, and eventually it's going to build up into resentment, and that and that's where it just goes to shit. Yeah. Okay, number seven. Wait, are any of these girls from like a southern state? Because I want to hear your southern accent again. <laughs> No, no. Well, several of them have been from Florida. Yeah, I don't know if we're still counting we Florida as the, the South. south. Yeah. No, we're Florida is completely separate. The the southern states end at the Georgia border up for, with Florida. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll just do this one for Nancy in Florida. Nancy, <laughs> a guy I'm dating casually told me sometimes when he gets a massage, he gets a happy ending. Sweet, like a woman <laughs> gives him a handy at the end. I was shocked. <laughs> He said it's pretty regular and that it happens more than I think. Is it really that common? I love that she's so innocent that she thinks she has to explain a happy ending to us. Yeah, I agree. I honestly don't know what to think about it. I asked him if he thought it would be cheating and he paused and said, oh, I guess it is. Uh, We should have totally taken the angle of what what is a happy? I don't know. What does this mean? What does a happy ending mean? (laughs) Okay, so two things are going on here. One, she is living so sheltered that she's never heard of a happy ending before. <laughs> two, he it didn't occur to him that this might be cheating. So they're both obvious doorknobs. Yeah, uh, that's true. I'm sorry to say that. I'm sorry, well, Nancy. <laughs> uh, um, Tell yeah. your husband to stop going to Asian massage parlors. Yeah, that's a thing that happens. And like, when... yeah, it says how common. 
Like I've never had been in that scenario where a happy it was, was offered. ever offered or on a menu. Well, there's a, all right. So this is another so. throwback to our future guest, Tom and Dan. There's a, apparently a technique you can do. Like they had their gr- little group of listeners talk about this a lot. And if you have a shoe, you take a 20 or a, you know, $40 and leave it in your shoe on the ground. And that is the sign, the subtle message to the masseuse that you want a happy ending because she'll go get the $40 out of your shoe, put it under her little, you know, tablecloth tower, whatever, and then come over and, oh, and see, you're good to go. Okay. So that's a different, that's different from what I've heard, but similar. Um, what I've heard is when you drape, you guys, your, when you drape your clothes heard. over the back of the chair, um, you, what you do is you unzip your fly on your pants that you had just taken off and you stick money in there sticking out of the fly. Like you zip it up to hold it there. <laughs> that way she sees where it is and she knows exactly where to put her mouth. Ah, yeah. that's an interesting thing. So if you leave too. it in the shoe, she would put her mouth on your... Hey, some dudes are in the toe sucking. Eh? No, I ain't, we're not here to judge. I uh, mean... <laughs> I wear flip flops out of convenience, not because my feet look good. <laughs> Did your feet feel any better? Yeah, after I guess soaking so. in the arnica. She gave me from some our special new knife. What? What? Can, is what? that like a knife? Knife is the brand. It's herbal <laughs> salts and oils. I thought and she started speaking that. in tongues. Oh. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck she's. Doing. It's German. Uh, hmm. uh, I don't know how to answer her question other than that. It's you guys do that does kind of make them seem like a couple of dodos. It's. Kind of what he said. Now here's the other thing: in some relationships, that's okay. In some relationship, those borders need to be like. I haven't had a massage since we've been going out, but you said a happy ending would be cheating. Got it. You so, get him before. Wait, before. What the hell's going on? What? No, no, no. The same type of what? No, some people are pretty open to it. I know where you're coming from. I yeah, have. I've uh, never. Yeah. There's some. <laughs> Why are you two so confused? Because it sounds like you You were saying that you used to go get massages until you met me, and then I said it would be cheating. So no, the happy endings of the massage would be cheating. So I would know if I'm ever in that situation that that's not okay in our relationship. Some some women are okay. (laughs) No, I I do know some women talking about. Some women see that it's it's not emotional. It's a business transaction. Right. That's all it is. Um. You know, and you know, and it's to- you're totally rightful. You know, it's totally within your rights to think it's cheating. That's fair too. Uh, you know, but there are different opinions on it. So he may yeah. not have realized it. I, he, okay, you guys may not be doorknobs. All right, I take it back. He may have been <laughs> in a relationship prior where she was okay with it, and it never occurred to him that it would be cheating because that's all he ever knew. So that, yeah, coming from that perspective, I guess I'm maybe gonna, she oh. is the massage therapist. His ex girlfriend was. <laughs> Yeah. Or his girl, the, it was his girlfriend. That's how it started, and he got it regular all the time. Can we go back to this? Do you get happy ending massages? No. no. Well, I mean, maybe at home, but th- that doesn't count. <laughs> but, no, I've never had. So I've had a professional massage. I think I don't, I've actually never had a professional massage. I had a massage on a cruise ship, but that wasn't like anything. It's still a licensed masseuse. Real. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, well, it was like no. A, you don't have to be licensed on the cruise ships. Oh well, never mind then. So, no. To answer your question, no. I was speaking hypothetically. <laughs> Just the way you worded it <laughs> made it seem like, like this is pretty much what I heard. <laughs> I get happy endings all the time, but now I know oh, that oh, it's oh. cheating. That's what so you guys were laughing at. <laughs> now I don't do it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. I see. I, I see. Hadn't, but the way you were saying it sounded like you were like, yeah, I used to get the massages all the time, <laughs> all the time. but time. now I don't. No, let's okay, see. Sure. I, I knew where they were coming from. I just didn't know why she was making a big deal out of yeah, it. Like, no, you were neither. together, obviously. <laughs> yeah. <That's, laughs> no, me neither. Okay. It's like a use. It's like a used Rolls Royce. You know, you're not the first, but do you really care? <laughs> <laughs> okay, number seven from Hannah in Florida. A guy I'm dating casually told me sometime. Oh wait, we just read that one. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk I didn't about recognize. Oh, wait, hold on. This is a guy she's casually dating. <laughs> yes. If it's casually dating, then there's no cheating. You're casual. She was just wondering about it. How often guys really get it? If it's really a thing that a lot of guys is it normal? You know that. Think, you if, know in that if situation, you're a guy that does that, then you get them a lot. If you're a guy that doesn't, like me, I've never done that. I'm not gonna lie. If I had, I that, don't know about. If it. I had the ability to get that, I'd get it all the time. Mary so yeah, Island. apparently you do. There is a place over here right yeah. under Tijuana flat well don't give them away to the feds <laughs> um yeah <laughs> we want Tijuana flats yeah. as a cousin man we lost I'm, Tijuana flats tonight and we lost uh, uh Gregory's tonight as 
potential sponsors. No, it's not two on a flat that gives happy endings. Although I am very happy every time I leave. Uh, that's a good point. <laughs> yeah, you can. Um, they kind of do. You know how this conversation went between these two? I know we're still on that one uh, uh, couple, but you know how this conversation went, right? Because of how she worded the email? Yeah. She approached her boyfriend about the situation. You know that's cheating, right? And then he's like, uh, yeah. I, I guess agree. So. I, I guess it is. <laughs> that's you know how that conversation went. Just okay, saying. I won't do it again. <laughs> I'll All just right. get a regular massage. God, I can't do anything. <laughs> do, if they use their feet, does that count as cheating? Yes. Oh, all right. All right, number eight, mm-hmm. Michelle in Oklahoma. Seriously, what do you get? Wait, what do you get the man who has everything? Who the hell is she dating? Two chicks at one time, man. <laughs> <laughs> Got a lot of office space. Um, what do you get the guy that has everything? I don't is think he has a, everything. I think she's just having a hard time shopping. Yeah, for is this a riddle? Because <laughs> <laughs> ladies, too. we don't know either. What do you get, guys? It, like a train uh, set? Guys are usually into one main thing in their life, whether it's football and a certain team or Remote whether it's car? Star Wars or whatever, you know. I'll tell you what. Would yeah, you, when it comes to those stuff, you can never have enough. I'm sorry, Ed. No, you're right. I'll tell you what would be a cool answer for, for this girl. Or a cool answer, a cool gift for this girl. <laughs> <laughs> it's a cool answer, too, I think. <laughs> the guy who has everything, get him something that he can create or build or make something with, like a kit to create something, like a... How about Bird like a kit. what's the, the the statue sculpting clay? Get him some of that and yeah. let him be creative. And then what he produces out of that, he doesn't already have. She's so. gonna give him some clay, and he's gonna be like, "What the hell is this? <laughs> what the for? fuck is this? That's a good point. What do you want me to do with clay? <laughs> I want you to make you, stuff. <laughs> what the fuck you? Do you want to do that scene from Ghost? Is that what this <laughs> yeah. is? Do you want to do pottery? <laughs> <laughs> I can do Patrick Swayze. Sure, <laughs> an experience of some kind for him. Then something that the two of them can do together, like a trip or. Something fun together that is not something that he already owns uh, substantially. What, what's the word I'm trying to say? Uh, something that's something not material. Possessions, material. Yeah, like there you go. Like a hot air balloon ride? That yeah. would be good. Yeah, yeah. Go, yeah, planet trip. Even if it's just like a one night stay at a bed and breakfast outside of town. Like that, that's, you or know, because that's a memory. Ride. Huh? A limo ride is great. Yeah. Or, you, ride hey, you birthday. know what? If the guy's in the back ribs, give him a happy ending. Oh, baby. <laughs> I don't have everything, though. There's still lots of materialistic things I would love to have. I'm just saying. <laughs> not that spending time with you is, is you know, not better. <laughs> yeah. When, when you have somebody, when you have somebody who has everything, give them memories. That's the best thing you can do. Give them a memory. There you go. Good answers, guys. God, we give good advice here. We are so good. You Number know, like two questions ago, we're like, don't listen to us. This is what happens when you have the same haircut as Dr. Phil. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You guys are going to like this one from Shannon in Texas. Okay. My boyfriend is into Star Wars, and I'm not. Yes, at yes. Help. <laughs> what was the, what get was the rest into of Star it? Wars? <laughs> what was the rest of it? Um, and I'm not at all. Help. Oh, yeah. she get into to, it. Yeah, just get she, into it. Yeah, what is she wanting us to do? <laughs> yeah, she needs to find somebody else. You sound like a horrible person. <laughs> yeah, you <laughs> just sound like she. You need to leave him. That's you, what, what that's happened. A, all the good. No, he, she doesn't need to leave him. He needs to leave her. Find well, that's somebody what I'm better. Saying. No, I'm saying leave him so he. I don't he like won't Star get, Wars. Yeah, he doesn't should, need anything interrupting his you understand. So she's the listener. You understand we should spend the next like five minutes telling her how good the storyline is and get her yeah, into it. Yeah, no, stop being a detriment to society and get into Star Wars. You know You're really missing a, out. <laughs> you know who else is a detriment to society? Well, well, Anakin was when he was younger. Well, obviously. Kylo Ren now, he is just a mess. <laughs> uh, so You started us on but this. But I'm very curious to see him where his character goes in the next one. If he becomes that moody teenager that grows into a productive well, that's, adult. That's <laughs> Who's the big dude? Who's the big dude in the end? He's very immature, and that he's that's so Shane, very right shown. Now I see it's very why visible. you don't like the Star Wars because <laughs> you are just they can just go on. Oh, I'm talking to Shannon. Go ahead. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh yeah, girl, you need you to just tune him out and let him do their thing. <laughs> if you want to, he he may not even want her to relate to him on this though. You know, what? yeah, he, he might like to be have, his thing. Yeah, he might like to have his own little personal escape no. from reality, being Star Wars, and he doesn't want his chick to be a Star for Wars. For her girl. to learn some Star Wars knowledge, first of all, we'll turn him the fuck on. Just. Dress and up secondly, like Princess Leia. Go in the bedroom. You're good. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, you yeah. know, you know how you That's look you at think. him when you start talking to him about the Kardashians, and he has no <laughs> idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Let him look at you. Let this be his Kardashians. Just. Or, yeah. or, or whatever it is you're into, just let him have this. I have Be one. cute and ignorant. And, and I don't, I don't necessarily like Princess one. Leia outfit. I like the Ewoks. <laughs> Andrew, can you dress up like an Ewok for me? 
I have the one final advice. So I'm not going to be Chewbacca for Halloween because I don't want to see Adam with a heart on the entire night. <laughs> Am I getting close? Actually, you are. That's a pretty good Ewok. Hey, it's uh, like the Ewok Unabomber. <laughs> She's got on a cat pillow. That's uh, two around things I needed to say. One that reminded me of another video that we did. You should check out. All right. <laughs> and also, I have one last thing to say. She needs to... What is it? I'm not sure where you're going to. <laughs> not you know the <laughs> zero, testing our ability to the zero the hero thing. Oh, oh, you drop. To, uh, why don't you lose the zero and join the hero? Or get a hero or something like that. But it switch those around. Switch them around. <laughs> lose the hero and get a zero. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there it is. That's her advice from hmm. me. Well, because he's <laughs> a fucking hero. <laughs> he's the hero. He is yeah, okay, yeah, okay, okay. And yeah, no, he, I see what she means. She wants to be with some zero dude, then have at it. <laughs> yeah, no, in all honesty, let this be his thing. Or if you're not genuinely interested, don't pretend to be. It's going to come off as patronizing. Um, yeah, True. just just be into what you're into and let him have this. Or, or you know, be a better person and get into it. I don't <laughs> know what to tell you there. <laughs> what, what was her name? Shannon. Shannon, we need a follow up email. Email. We need some more substance here. Yeah, let us know What's how your it question? goes. <laughs> we always say that we never get anything. Yeah, you're right. Just secretly have a book in your hand and put a pillow blanket over your lap when he's watching it. And no, if you're watching it with him. You can read your book. He wants you to He'll watch know. it with him. No, no, no. Don't pretend if you're like if you're not into you don't it. Have don't to be, be into, into it. it. Listen, okay. My girl is not huge in Star Wars at all. But over our hurricane time, our vacation we spent together, um, I put on a uh, a Force Awakens, and she'd never seen it. You know, she was like, "Which one is this?" I'm That's like, a Star like, Wars movie, one. Andrea. <laughs> I know. And I, she, I was eight. like, it's a new one. I was like, well, like how old? You know, she had no clue. You know, I was like, it's this one. She's like, oh, okay. So we watched it. And at the end of it, she goes, so put in the next one. And I was like, hell yeah. <laughs> that turned me on so much. I was like, unfortunately, baby, it's not out till for another year and a half. But, but yeah, well, there's Rogue One coming out in December as well. But, and she was like, oh, she was all excited. But, disappointed at the same time it's kind of like a normal evening with me i love it the sexiest thing a woman could do is pull out the star wars box set and show up in a like a onesie <laughs> <laughs> like a c-3po onesie <laughs> i agree and baby it's gonna be a star wars day like yes this is why we work ewok outfit andrea ewok <laughs> all right Bonus points if instead of a C-3PO onesie, she gets a dot matrix from Spaceballs onesie. <laughs> <laughs> Bonus points. <laughs> my virginity alarm is going off. Yes. Yeah. yes. That's my virginity alarm. It's set to go off before you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I have one more left. All right. Okay. It's from Abby in Georgia. Um, my boyfriend and his best friend are fighting, not speaking to each other. What are the do's and don'ts of a girlfriend? Do I stay out of it, or are there subtle, non-intrusive ways to get them on the same page again? Thanks. Stay way stay out, of out of that. Yeah, yeah. I read yeah. subtle, non-intrusive. I read that as passive-aggressive. No, just <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If, especially if he's known you, if he's known him a lot longer than he's known you. Yeah, just just you know, be there when he needs consoling. But that's it. O- outside of that, maybe ask if things are getting better occasionally, just to show you're interested in paying attention. But as far as actually trying to get involved and get dirty about, no, no, just keep your hands clean. We're going to analogize this to Chris Rock saying, don't ever touch a black man's radio. Yup. Stay the <laughs> hell away from it, just like that situation in whatever that movie, Rush Hour, I think, or something. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, th- that girl should not interfere at all. And don't get mad if he, if you ask and he says, look, it's really none of your business or I don't want to get into it. Don't get upset. That's probably something he wants to play close to the chest. Just, just let him have that. He's, he's going to need that space. Don't don't take it personal. I, I do remember the question, and I agree <laughs> with all of that. Excellent <laughs> advice. I don't remember the question. All right, <laughs> that's it. That's Is that all of them? That's it. Good guy. Do we have any reverse guyry questions we want to throw back on Andrea? All of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one. I can't think of anything. Why can't women understand that I'm literally thinking of nothing? <laughs> <laughs> Works good, for me. That's a good All question. Right, good show, guys. No, no, no. That was your question. Uh, that's a cop out. Uh, you, you know, that was a legit question. You don't want to no. answer? It? I th- yeah. <laughs> like we are absolutely. Have you? You make fun of us for being dumb all the time. Why is it so hard to believe we could actually be empty minded? <laughs> like, that's why I thought it was over. And you didn't have a question. You were no. being empty minded. <laughs> no. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> I I didn't know he did. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it's not really when a girl him specifically. Women <laughs> listeners, comment in the comments. Let it, let us get yeah. back to me on this. I, I'm I'm really I God I want you I want to know what's gonna what Jay, the answers are. What Jay be. asks is when a girl asks a guy, uh, "What are you thinking because about?" And he's really thinking not. bad thoughts about the girl. They're thinking about all the things that they is don't that like what's about happening her, inside your head and all the girls that they'd rather be with than her. That's and what you think we're just thinking. Got to know Come what's Lord. going on in there. Look, sometimes Man. you don't want to know what's going on in my head. Yeah. I had a girl ask me that one time. I want to know what's going on in your head. I'm like, you don't want a piece of that. Yeah. I'm like, two crack deals away from Detroit. It's dirty. It's disgusting. <laughs> you don't want any. Because sometimes I'll watch a rib commercial and 20 minutes later I'm still thinking I want ribs and that's all I've thought for the last 20 minutes. The, nothing. Rib, That's ribs literally do, nothing. Ribs do sound good right now. Yeah, Sometimes I'm just tearing off into space. What are you thinking about? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I forgot I was awake. I'm sorry. That, what happened? That's happened to me before. Like, with a girl, I'm, we're watching a movie and she's like, tell me. I'm like, what? She's like, what are you thinking about? What, what, what's on your mind? What you? I'm like, we're watching this movie. Like, that's what I'm thinking about. And it just, it, but she would not, she's like, no. And she got mad because, I wouldn't tell her what I was thinking. Express your feelings. <laughs> I was watching a movie with somebody and she asked me like, what I was thinking. And I, like, I, I didn't want to admit it, but I was thinking like her makeup is way overdone. That's exactly what I was thinking, but I was like, that's the gayest thing I could say to a woman I'm dating. <laughs> and so, girls, those shoes don't match? Yeah, no, I was totally judging this woman's makeup and outfit in a movie. And I was like, <laughs> oh, God, who did this wardrobe? Why Why does this lady have a job? And she's like, what are you thinking about? I'm like, I'm not copying to that. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Adam usually tells me everything that's on his mind when I ask. Usually. Even if it's far out there and like randomest thing in the world. And like, that is true for ribs. most men, ladies. <laughs> there are many nights where we're laying in bed and she asks me that question and it's always, what? What's the answer I always give? <laughs> you even said it the other night. You're like, I bet you're thinking about this, aren't you? I'm like, God I damn know. it. Now I, I can't remember just off the... Off the, what's those again? Pop quiz, hot shot. <laughs> Theoretical <laughs> physics, quantum physics. Oh, uh, Got it? I guess not. All right. Moving right no, along. No, I do remember. I just can't remember right now. <laughs> you were talking about space stuff. You were like quantum physics or something like that. Big Bang Theory? No, nothing. Are you always thinking about Big Bang Theory? I do like Big Bang Theory. It's a good TV show. I know it's cheesy, but I'm one of the bandwagon guys. Yeah, All I right. I like it. I love it. Sure. Should we wrap up and get out of here? Yeah, man. Let's do it. All right. Check us out on Facebook at facebook.com slash livingpodcariously. Uh, if you look, if any of this show was entertaining to you, be it you heard it from a direct download on Facebook or on Podcast Radio Network, share it with a friend. Go to iTunes, subscribe, uh, review us as well in there, and give us a give us five stars. It only helps promote us a little bit more. Uh, you can email us at show at livingpodcariously dot com. What's our uh, Twitter handle? Tag? Twitter is at podcarious. Do we actually ever post anything on there? I guess we it's should. Been a probably... while, sir. <laughs> it's been a while. Um. Oh, God. We went from Nickelback to Stained. Oh, <laughs> whoa, whoa. That's twice now you make fun of Stained. I love Stained. Uh oh. I'm sorry, dude. <laughs> Jay, where Why? Can, where can they find you upcoming again? Plug uh, again. Yeah, I'm going to be at uh, Open Mics at Florida Disco Music uh, October 26th. Uh, I will be at Gregory's Comedy Club. That's still pretty far out. Weekend of uh, November 17th. And uh, stay tuned for updated dates. And Gregory's has great food. Check out their food specials. Except their salads. Except their salads, yeah. (laughs) All right. Uh, Well, thanks for listening. I'm Adam. And I'm Tack. I'm Jay Alvarez. What? (laughs) What the fuck? (laughs) Like, freaking me out, man. Her mouth is dry. I was like, oh my God. She's that comic that died on the air. (laughs) I was about to give you a Heimlich. (laughs) So did I. I was like, my God, what is happening? I'm Andrea Joy. (laughs) Are you going to edit all that? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And I'm Jay Alvarez. All right. Thanks for listening. Catch you guys next week. See ya.